Welcome to a Resident Evil 4 Remake Any% S Plus Run on Professional Difficulty. This guide is meant for beginners to intermediate level players. Even if you are a veteran, you may benefit from some of the information in this guide. You're going to be learning useful skips, powerful items and techniques, as well as some of the best places to save to meet the requirement of 15 saves only for S Plus. There will be live commentary on everything that I'm doing, and during some of the downtime, there will be edited commentary on some of the techniques that I'm employing during the run. This is not an optimized speedrun by any sense of the word. We are aiming for one step below Sweaty Gamer, okay? Although I am utilizing many speedrunning techniques, I'm making this guide for the average person, minimizing your frustration and maximizing your survivability. You're not only going to beat professional difficulty with an S+. By the end of this guide, you will pass with flying colors, with no bonus items, no armored Ashley, just Leon's default loadout like God intended. And most important of all, we're gonna have fun doing it. So without further ado, throw this up on your second screen and let's play some bingo. Keep in mind that I'm playing on PC with a mouse and keyboard, but many of these techniques can be employed on console as well. Although this is not a speed run, there is an upside to doing things with conviction and speed. When you are doing things fast, you are basically minimizing the amount of things that can go wrong during that time. I was aiming for a sub three hour run as a personal best. The first important thing that you're going to learn in any survival horror game for that matter is running past enemies. Like this first guy here. If you pause right by the stairwell, he's going to lunge. And there is a pause between his first and second lunge, allowing to skirt right past him. The tutorial is actually such a bait because you don't need to kill most enemies in this game. Learning what to run past and what to kill is essential in any game. And it's especially essential in this game because of resource management. And speaking of resource management, this game has a dynamic ammo drop system. So basically, the more you use a type of item, the more items the game is going to drop for you. So if you use a lot of rifle ammo, it will eventually drop more rifle ammo. I know it's all RNG, but it's kind of part of the fun of Resident Evil, to be honest. It makes every run interesting and different. Don't hoard your items is what I'm trying to say. If you hoard a bunch of gunpowder, the game is not going to drop any more gunpowder for you. So it's best to use your items when you need them. Don't hoard. So for this part right here, we're just going to run past these guys. There's no point in fighting them. Uh, Leon's movement is actually really good. You can dodge a lot of enemies. Uh, but I'll talk about that after the village. Watch out for the bear trap here. Grab these items. Mind the guy behind you. If you're quick enough, you can just dodge him. But if you're not quick enough, then you're going to get hit. Plus, you're going to get blocked by the two guys that were chasing after you. So your movement has to be good here. So this village section is very, very RNG. I'm not going to lie to you right now. You can have one of the slowest villages or the fastest villages. It's completely up to RNGs. So the first thing we're going to do is turn to the right and kill this old lady by stabbing her in the neck. Casual. Por favor, please don't kill me. Uh, you can grab this red herb if you have to, but you, you don't have to. Some people kill this guy. I decided to kill this guy first. He died real quick. Come in here, grab the hand grenade. Then you're going to go to this door right here. Okay? You're going to wait for a second. And then you're going to toss a grenade. And you're going to wonder why I'm pausing a bunch here. And I'm not sure if this is 100% copium or not. But apparently using grenades and then pausing while the grenade is going off increases its damage and potentially increases your kill count but i have no idea this could be unobstantiated i just see a lot of speedrunners doing it but this time i got eight kills which was excellent super super lucky that is a super good grenade eight kills and then after that we're gonna run directly into this house so we can grab the shotgun and a second grenade. We're going to turn around. And then we're going to blast this person that comes up the ladder. We're going to turn to our left, grab some shotgun shells. Then we're going to go right out the window and equip our grenade. And if you're lucky, there should be a very juicy grenade waiting for you out here. But there have been many, many runs where I don't get a lot of people waiting by the ladder. And if that's true then I think that you should save your grenade for a bigger crowd. I would just 
hop down and get a bigger crowd going and then use your grenade and then finish off any leftovers with a shotgun when you reach 16 kills it will trigger the bell for bingo and then you're home free we actually don't need to collect any items in this village because we can come back to it if we want to but you know it's not that big of a time loss if you just grab them real quick the village is probably where most people are just going to restart if they don't get a good time because the village is so early in the game and having a good village can really set up the rest of your game to be very very smooth it can give you a lot of confidence and here at the village we're actually going to grab a few things but first we're going to sneakily kill this guy so we can shoot the blue medallions and also grab this treasure that's on the windmill Some runners don't grab this stuff because it's uh it's too slow, but we're not going for an ultra speed run, so it's fine. We're gonna kill this lady. So just she doesn't give us issues. You can actually shoot the lock from this window. It's hilarious. But, you know, since I'm a pro gamer, uh, I, I didn't get it that time. Then we're going to shoot the blue medallion from out here. And then here you can turn around and then immediately interact with the ladder even though the camera kind of forces its perspective towards the door, um, you don't have to look at certain things to interact with them in this game. That's another important thing that you should learn. You can pick up items without looking at them. Some people grab the treasure. I don't think that it's necessary to grab the treasure in the chest. Watch out for the <laughs> the tripwire mine here. Uh, I'm more than embarrassed that I've run into quite a few of those. Too many, actually. So at this point, you may have many enemies on your tail. And if you do, I probably wouldn't grab those barrels there. And here you get full invincibility while you're moving this. So a lot of enemies will run up to you, but they can't actually hit you until you come out of the animation. But you can get hit right as you come out of it. So be careful with that. So now that we have some downtime while we're running towards Luis, we can discuss some movement techniques. I've had some friends who play Apex Legends and you know COD Modern Warfare tell me that Leon feels very clunky and slow. And coming from those games, I completely understand what they're talking about. But compared to other survival horror characters, Leon is a freaking action hero giga chad. Okay, he can dodge, parry, dip, dive, dodge, dodge again. Okay, once you've mastered his techniques, he's going to feel real good. And one of those techniques you're going to learn is the spin around ADS technique. I don't know, that's what I'm calling it, okay? So basically, ADS allows you to turn on a dime and stop on a dime. So you'll see a lot of speedrunners basically spin their camera around and ADS, which allows Leon to move forward faster because coming out of ADS, Leon kind of lunges forward and gets a slight speed boost as compared to using WASD to turn around because Leon kind of has to stop his momentum before moving in the other direction. So whipping your mouse around and ADSing will not only help you dodge enemy attacks, but will help you move faster just by holding W. Yeah. And also using your camera to dodge around enemies is actually more consistent than using WASD because Leon keeps his forward momentum if you use your camera to point in which direction that he wants to go towards. And if you're one of the three people that are still here watching, you may notice that I'm running a mod called RE Framework. Uh, it basically allows me to display the in-game time, uh, the game rank, and the kill count as uh, an overlay on my screen. 
it just gives me some pertinent information that I may need. Uh, it goes way deeper than that, but you don't need uh, everything. I just want to be able to see my in-game time without pausing the game, to be honest. Uh, you don't need to save here because actually you're not going to be saving for the first couple of chapters. We're not going to make our first save until chapter three. Sacrificial lamb. Shit, I took my because you need to meet the minimum requirement of 15 saves only in order to get S+. Uh, you don't want to waste your saves at the beginning sections when you can just restart. So this next section is basically a, a knife tutorial section. And one of the biggest differences between hardcore and professional difficulty is the fact that you have to hit perfect parries. And on hardcore, it feels like you get 30 frames to parry an attack, but on professional, it feels like 10. So it makes some certain attacks very, very hard to parry. Um, or it's inconsistent at best. This guy right here, you're gonna just attack him immediately and if you do he won't have time to retaliate and also we're going to kill the rats to get some spinels and you're going to find out why we need spinels later on we're going to grab this sapphire and also some handgun ammo from in here and before you go make sure to uh deactivate this bear trap right here And then if you hop the wall and mash attack, you can actually get a guaranteed stealth attack if you're fast enough. I'll wrap back here. And I'm actually going to fast forward through some of the parts here because I accidentally messed up. Uh, Capcom hates me for some reason. Oh, hello? Hello? What the f Is just gone. It's, it's bye bye. Yeah. It's okay. It's not a big deal. I'll be taking these back. So for this next section, we don't even need to talk to the merchant. We don't need anything from him right now. So let's just head right into the next section to get the uh, the hexagonal emblem for the gate. This section is an absolute RNG fest with the dynamite. You're more than likely going to lose a run here, exactly, because of the dynamite guys. But if you take this route, then I think you're going to be okay. Now's a good time to talk about the shotgun. The shotgun is not a killing tool, okay? It can be used as a killing tool, but what it really is, is a get the fuck out of my way tool. Whether you shoot it at the chest or the legs, there's huge knockback on the shotgun, allowing you to basically pave the way for Leon to complete his mission. And you should use it as such. You shouldn't think of the shotgun as anything else but a get the fuck out of my way tool. He punched me. He punched me. No, 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 no! I was reloading my shotgun! F you! Oh, oh my god, I thought that... And since I saw two guys following behind me, I decided to shoot this red barrel here. What the hell? You can dodge this guy coming up front, and then shoot the red barrel before the guy throws the dynamite. We don't need any of this stuff. Shoot this dynamite guy! Amazing. He will fuck your shit up if you don't. Yeah, actually, I want to save that for the yellow herb I'm about to get. And if the lady tries to grab you, you're actually invincible to grabs during this animation. If you're quick enough, you can get past all these enemies before they have a chance to hit you. But like I said, it's very RNG. You stupid bitch. Luckily, this is still close to the beginning of the game, so it doesn't feel that bad if you have to retry it. Are you gonna play nice? No, you're not. Yeah, thank you for killing that person for me. Appreciate it. <laughs> this upcoming puzzle is a real brain teaser, so I gotta focus, okay? Alright, there we go. 
So now we're going to go to the merchant and we're going to sell all of our treasures and we should have enough to buy the bolt action sniper rifle. We buy it during this chapter because we also get the scope for free. This thing is going to be your best friend in the entire world during this run. It is by far the highest DPS weapon that you have. Fully upgraded with the exclusive ticket, this thing is an absolute monster of a weapon. S tier weapon. Easily. Of course not. Of course, the sneak attack didn't work. I don't think she's gonna be a problem. What are you doing up there for? So coming up on this part right here, if you stand here and shoot the treasures from where you are, the sound of your gun will not alert the chainsaw guy, Dr. Salvador, that's coming up right here. Allowing you to just run past him without having to parry him or shotgun blast him at all. He won't have enough time to attack you. You can just quickly duck under and grab this treasure. The hitbox is so weird. Watch out for the bear trap here. There's two bear traps. There's another one coming up. All the bear traps are so well hidden, by the way. They're so good, and, and they're colored exactly like the floor. Grab this ruby. Not too is this random? This Some is random. Up their neighbors. There's always a hand grenade neighbors. there. There's always money here. The solution. Bebe. Crop pig and bebe. Yeah, like, I don't want to call it a speedrun because I don't want it to seem like I'm being sweaty. We're going to grab this small key while luring this guy. We run past him, causing him to lunge at us. Oh, this is not Resident Evil 2. There is no speed boosting upstairs. I just grabbed that red herb right there. And, uh, you don't have to watch me suck at this puzzle. Yeah, I'm one step exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm one step before sweaty. Because I've been like seeing a lot of people like they they think that like they're having a really hard time with professional difficulty. And I'm gonna be super honest with you, I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> Dude, the voice acting is so good. And that's the end of chapter two. You don't need to save here either because the next section is pretty easy. So we're now we're just going to go back the way we came. Run downstairs. There's a chicken egg in the kitchen if you need it. And we're always going to save the dog. Because being a dog owner myself, I'm going to save the dog. I don't care about the time loss. Every playthrough. Every single time. So now we're headed back towards the village. I tend to grab boxes that are not too out of the way. It's a good general rule of thumb. You never know if RNG is going to bless you with a grenade or, or hell, even a heavy grenade. In this next section, there's going to be um, dogs that are scripted to attack you after the towers explode. And you're going to try to go through this door right here, but it's locked. But you can just shoot the lock off real quick. And watch out for the tripwire as you come in. I've run into that so many times. Watch out for that lady, but you can just run past her. Shotgun this guy because he's going to grab you. If a Ganado is unarmed, it's going to grab you for sure. And the... Grab is near instantaneous. 
I fucking hate grabbers. They can all go to hell. I wouldn't hate them as much if they didn't do like a quarter of your life when they grab you. Don't worry if you don't have enough space to get all of the stuff in the previous room because you're going to come back here after you rescue Ashley. And here is where I would sell things to the merchant like the Viper if you wanted extra spinels for doing the side quest. A lot of stuff. So this next section is pretty breezy. It's pretty unlikely that you're going to die here. So that's why we still haven't made a save yet. A church. I made it. To be honest, the village is the hardest part. Turn turn around slower, man. Turn around slower. Go ahead and attack the emblems on the gravestones here. It's just free spindles. And now we're entering the church. I have to map these correctly. You can run back here and grab the guaranteed flashbang and guaranteed large resources and the treasure that's here in the back, but you don't have to. A lot of speedrunners just skip this part. Okay, then you can go back. But I don't think that it's that much of a time loss, to be honest. Up with this egg. Yum, yum, yum. And in this upcoming section in this room, we're going to go ahead and grab the yellow diamond that's in the small drawer. Like, I can just do this, right? Like, even with the shotgun, I can, like, I can, like, do that. Like, just whip it to the side. But you can't do that on a controller. Unless you're, like, aim sensitivity is, like, ungodly high. So in this next section, I like to shoot this Molotov out of this guy's hand just to get him burning right away. Watch out for the Viper in here. I don't think I have a oh no. Oh no. God fucking damn it, I don't have room for this shit. I don't want to keep no 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 stay dead. Stay dead. Stay dead. Stay dead. Oh that was close. After you run past all those guys, be sure to blast these two guys that are coming up. Apparently you can get the enemies to um not spawn here. You fatty move. Yeah, apparently, like, you can get those two guys down the tunnel to, like, not spawn. Wait, I don't need a knife. Oh my god, please pick up the money. You can use a flashbang here to basically kill all the crows instantaneously and stun the dogs that are in the room. I won't have enough bullets to kill him. You may not want to waste grenades here, but I don't mind. There is a blue medallion up here and a treasure that's over here. And now, why don't we go ahead and just fast forward until we get to the merchant.
I mean, I guess I don't need to save here, but fish farm is just so scary to me. And this is where I recommend that you make your first save because there's a lot of things that can go wrong at the fish farm. Now's a good time to probably sell anything that you need to sell to the merchant because you want to free up a lot of space. Also, repair your knife if you need it. We're going to go ahead and grab the hexagonal emblem or piece. You can also grab it on the way back here if you missed it this time around. So the fish farm is super dangerous because of the fact that the pighead guy and also the dynamite guy, the people throwing axes, and the fact that I'm going around and collecting all the blue medallions as well. So your timing and movement here has to be very, very tight. So before you drop down, you're going to go ahead and shoot this bird nest that's in this tree here. And we're not even going to bother killing the pig guy. Like, it takes around like four to five sniper, God damn it. sniper rounds in order to kill him. But it's not worth the resources. Just run past him for the second medallion that's in the shed. Have your shotgun ready in case you need to blast anything out of the way. And then here, we're going to hit a trick shot for this medallion here. And it sucks because the weapon bloom in this game is ridiculous. So it requires a little bit of luck, unfortunately. I try to go for the Viper here because I was greedy. You don't have to. I wanted to complete the side quest. And of course, I run out of room. I end up disposing of this sniper shell here just to make some room. Fourth blue medallion. Hexagonal piece B. There might be a big clump here. Shoot the lock off. And then shoot the barrel behind you to keep people from following you. Grab the boat fuel. Have your shotgun ready to blast people out of the way. Luckily, there wasn't many enemies near me. I'm also lucky that that guy didn't hit me. You just gotta be quick. Quick with your movements. Fun fact, if you shoot this crossbow guy, he'll fall into the, uh, the explosive, clearing it for you. I grab this barrel. Free items, whatever. Have my shotgun ready. Sorry, old man. Old lady, I mean. It's okay. There is no gender. We're all plagas. We are all Gloria Las Plagas. So I got through that section relatively scot-free. I would consider that a pretty lucky fish farm. But that's why we made that save back there in case something did go wrong. So that save we made earlier is a good place to make a save. Then you're gonna turn around on this dock and get the final blue medallion. Now, the Delago fight. To be honest with you, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just land all the harpoons. Uh, there is a difference between uh, charged shots and uh, uncharged shots. There's a difference in damage. Don't flick your cursor too hard because I feel like the... The reticle, I feel like the reticle is very accurate to where you aim it, so no fun flicking tricks. Of course, I'm a pro gamer. And I miss a bunch of shots. But I heard that if you turn your frame rate down to 60 FPS or lower, the waves are actually smaller. So you can hit Del Lago a little bit easier than if you were at 120 FPS like I... Uh, I'm using right now. But yeah, the amount of time that you're going to save here is completely dependent on your accuracy. Here, I get a pretty bad fight. Um, most speedrunners can get him in one cycle. Uh, I got 
all three cycles, which is absolutely terrible. So we're just probably going to just fast forward until we hit the end of this section. Jesus, can you imagine fighting Del Lago at this actual speed? That's real professional difficulty. <laughs> Yeah, what a terrible fight, but that should be the end of that chapter. And you don't need to save here because the next section is pretty consistent. Too much rifle ammo. It's okay, we need it for uh, El Gigante. So, for this introduction of the headbursters, you can just run past these two guys. <gasps> you. Yep, they're not even fast enough to follow you. Yeah, like you just like hold it for longer and then the, the distance changes. And then if it's like fully charged, it does more damage, I believe. What is this place? You don't need to interact with anything in this cave. Just run right past it. So, I mean, I would like to reach the castle. Um... Before one hour, that would be nice. Okay, and then now we send the uh, the rifle to storage. So here in this section, you're gonna first kill the big lunker boss. That's why uh, we made room in our inventory. I, need to heal. I can't. I can't even heal. And then we're gonna stop by Bok Island in order to pick up the golden egg, and it's really important. You'll see why. Hey, um, is the YouTube stream laggy? I'm using Restream, and it's giving me like, I don't know, like drop frames, and it's just not great. Like, I usually want to be saving those for, um, like, flash grenades. I like saving, uh, the large resources to make flash grenades. So here at this upcoming section, you can just mash F while you're near the docks, and you'll automatically turn the boat around. It's not buffering? Okay. Well, I, it was just like, it wasn't like a very smooth stream. Like, that's all I remember. Like just watching the VOD back, I was like, oh, this, this is kind of jittery and not in like a complete 60 frames. But um, I did turn down the settings uh, for Resident Evil. I turned it down to 2K from 4K. So it might be a little lighter on my system now. Yeah, it's worth going around this cavern and gathering all the stuff, I don't think it's that big of a time loss. And now we're gonna head to Red Nine Island. Oh, you... In order to grab the Red Nine to sell. Like, I'm guessing uh, one of the reasons why my system was lagging was because for that reason, I forgot to go to Red Nine Island. What's great is that if you don't have storage for the Red 9, you can just use the send to storage functionality and send it right to the typewriter and you can sell it to the merchant right from the merchant menu. It's really convenient. 
Good future. We're selling it because we're not going to be using the red 9. Okay. Because we rarely will upgrade our pistol in this run at all. And now we're going to go a little bit out of the way down this cavern here. We have this fun little game where we hit all the barrels to get money. Thank you, Capcom. Remembering a game is still a game. Most speedrunners don't get this stuff either. It's too out of the way. Yeah, I think flash grenades are easily the most important items that you can get. Another hand grenade. We are swimming in hand grenades. Hold. Make sure to get this treasure up here. The Alexandrites are good drops because um, there's not a lot of them in the game. Actually, all of the square jewels are really, really rare, including the, uh, the yellow diamond. But the rubies and sapphires drop like candy. So now we're going to get the last head from this section. We're going to be running past most things right here. Just keep your shotgun ready, like I said. Oh, flash grenade, but I don't have room for it. How unfortunate. Oh, I picked it up. Okay. Oh, thank you for being so kind and not attacking me. I my asshole. This guy might give you trouble. Blast him out of the way if so. I have too many items. I shouldn't even break the boxes. I have so many items. Nope. No, I did it wrong. I hate that this is mouse wheel. I hate that that's mouse wheel. So here, we're going to run back towards this section rather the way that we came from. Because it's going to be full of enemies. And there's a yellow, yellow herb here too, so that's nice. Okay, no one interrupt me. Everyone just stay where they are. Uh, you might as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, they say it so much. I can't help it. <laughs> Yo, their on fire uh, sound effects are really good too. So as you can see, we just kind of made like a big circle around the lake in order to grab the items. Um... That big circle is just going to allow you to collect everything in a timely manner. Even though there's a faster way to do it, it never feels like you're wasting your time. So you're going to grab the far away head first before grabbing the head that's inside. Where all the enemies are. It's just better flow that way. And now that you have the key... You can go ahead and head back to the merchant, who is right across from you. There is actually a small drawer to your left here, but we're not going to go grab it because it's just a brass pocket watch. We don't need it right now. We're going to save our small keys. Um for later on and also in the castle. So now before we head to the merchant, we're gonna go outside and grab the depraved idol. The solution for this is pretty simple. I mess up here, but I'll verbally explain it to you. Oh, yeah, this is where I mess up here. 
Here we can fix this. First, you're going to go to the right and turn it two times. And then to the left, turn it two times. And then you go to the top and turn it once, and boom, the puzzle is solved. Yes, it is very, very easy. And there's going to be a lot of game journalists that complain about how simple the puzzles are, but they're always meant to be simple because they're meant to be memorized. If the puzzles were RNG or way too hard, then it would make multiple playthroughs a nightmare. So now we're going to stop by the merchant. So, that's a request. <laughs> so this is the section before the El Gigante fight. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell all of our treasures, including the Splendid Bangle, because I never slot them. Because the square gems are so rare. And using that money, we're going to upgrade our rifle to its maximum power. You don't have to take it to level 4, you can just take it to level 3 and increase your ammo capacity or reload speed instead. That's also a viable option. But what we're essentially going to do is burst down the El Gigante with rifle rounds. It is worth every single rifle round if you can down El Gigante very quickly because he is very unpredictable. That's why I also recommend saving here, um, but I don't because I felt pretty confident. But if you don't want to do that whole lake section again, then I definitely recommend that you save here. Because the next section will have a consistent uh, method that will teach you to get across with basically no deaths. But for this El Gigante fight, it's basically a, a skill challenge. You need to be able to hit your headshots with your rifle because you get a 3x bonus to weak spot attacks. So hitting that Plaga is super important. So I'm not too worried about it. It's a pretty chill fight. If you're feeling overwhelmed, go hide in one of the houses, collect the items. You should have plenty of healing items at this point to get through El Gigante if you were running past enemies instead of killing every single one of them. God damn you, big boy. God damn you, big boy. So you're going to hit him in the head while kiting him. And after a certain number of shots, his back plaga is going to pop out, allowing you to shoot it. And this is exactly where he takes the most damage. And I did so much damage to him that the wolf triggered literally 10 seconds into the fight. You wanna help? I could use it. Here, I even miss a couple shots, but I had so much rifle ammo, I wasn't even worried. Come on. Eventually, the wolf is going to help you. Yeah, when he's at a mid-range distance, he always seems to do a charge. You can just kite it to the side. It's very easy to dodge. I got stun locked here. It was so bad. But luckily I had so many healing items. And you should too. It's not a matter of just luck. So here, the wolf's gonna be a bro. Help you take that El Gigante, get some free shots in. I tried to finish him off with my pistol, but it wasn't doing it. So I was like, whatever, back to the sniper rifle. And now that's all clear, I'm just going into these houses to collect okay. any items that I may need. I'm looking for gunpowder, grenades, large resources. Those are very, very precious. See, I'm hesitating here to even use my large resources. Because they can make rifle ammo, they can make flash bangs, they can make heavy grenades. Some of the most powerful items in this game are made from large resources.
just running out of space here. And it's always really important that we take a, a two second time loss in order to thank the dog for his work. But it goes to show that as long as you know what you're doing, you're going to have so much resources that you don't even know what to do with. It only really starts getting tight near the castle because I think that the castle is the hardest part of the game. Here for this wolf, you can go ahead, can you can escape or aim down sights to cut the cutscene short before he transforms and kill him. Or you can just run past him too, but just make sure that you uh, ADS or escape out of the cutscene uh, before he transforms. So now we're going inside the church. There's submachine gun ammo in the cabinet, but we don't need the submachine gun ammo because we're never going to use the TMP because the TMP sucks ass. Ass. Uh, we got some weed right here, green weed. No space for it though. And then I'm an idiot and I try to go through the door before it's actually open. You're going to grab the small key that's right here. And then you can cancel out of the lever pulling animation by ADS. And this puzzle is pretty self explanatory. You know, put the square peg in the square hole. We don't need the boats, uh, we don't need the bolts that are on the pew. We can just go straight for Ashley and start the next chapter. Ashley, you in there? Ash and that is the end of chapter four. Okay, now you're gonna see some pretty crazy shit. Some wacky stuff. And I'm gonna explain it to you. So for this next thing, you're gonna need a scoped weapon. And the only scope weapon we have right now is the sniper rifle, the bolt action. Okay. So have Ashley lower the ladder. And then we're gonna aim down sights and push our body against the wall here. Okay, and as we push our body against the wall, we're gonna spin our camera and interact with the ladder. And we're going to clip through the wall and down onto the floor. Now you may be asking yourself, what the hell just happened? Well, let me explain it a little bit further. Basically, when you aim down sights with a scoped weapon in this game, it extends Leon's character model backwards unnaturally. And you can use this tech to basically push Leon into walls where he shouldn't be. And in this particular example, I pushed myself into the wall and then spun my camera around really quickly in order to clip Leon into the wall and interact with the ladder at the same time. And since his body model's in the wall, he drops down the ladder, but past the walls and down into the pews. That's basically what's happening. I'll explain it a little bit more in depth as it becomes more relevant later during the run. Using that skip allows us to keep Ashley safe in the church. She's much safer in there than with you. Because usually you would have to expend a lot of resources in order to keep enemies from grabbing Ashley. So, in my opinion, you should do the skip for that alone. Just the resources that you'll save. So back in this section, we can go ahead and grab all the items that we couldn't grab because our inventory was full. Yeah, running past this section is going to be a breeze because we don't have Ashley with us. was right about the weather. Normally, you would have to kill all the enemies here or expend more flashbangs. And flashbangs are very, very precious in this game. Even though you can just make them.
There's a little jewel on the roof that you can actually grab to the side here, but I didn't even bother. Shotgun these fools. You don't want them in your way. And now we're heading back to the farm. Up in this next section, there's nothing important to grab. We're just gonna go into the windmill and meet the merchant. And we're actually going to make another save there. Because the cabin is cancer. Watch out for the pig guy. Yellow herb. Welcome. Got some rare things on sale. Well, well, so right here, I can certainly do something. you can sell anything that you don't need, but you don't need to buy anything or upgrade anything at the merchant. This is probably the second or third most important save that you can make in the run. For me, it was my second save. So here's a trick. If you quickly run out here and turn the corner, you can actually stealth attack this guy. You can... You can... Okay, you can round this corner and then you can stealth attack this guy and get a emerald off of him. So this cabin fight sequence is hell. There is some RNG involved with the headbursters, the plagas. If you get a lot of them, then it's going to make this fight significantly harder. So the goal of this fight is to get uh, the wooden planks to drop from the enemies. And you need to kill as many enemies as fast as possible in order to get the wood planks to drop. Because you want that to happen because it speeds up the next sequence where they uh, put up the ladders to get onto the second floor. And we're going to kill them using the sniper rifle. And now is a good time to explain why the sniper rifle is an S tier weapon and the best weapon in the game. Each sniper rifle round has so much value because it's basically a guaranteed kill if you land a headshot. Unless you get a headburster, of course. It's just the amount of damage each shot does, especially with a fully upgraded rifle. The speed that you can do it in the accuracy, no weapon bloom. It's just an all around good DPS weapon. And that's why the sniper rifle is pretty much meta in a lot of Resident Evil games where a sniper rifle is present. And this bolt action rifle is so powerful that the damage alone makes up for the fact that it doesn't have as high of a fire rate as the stingray. So here, it's all about just killing as many enemies as fast as possible. No, Luis! What the hell are you doing, Luis? Stand in my goddamn way! Like, this is the safe area, right? Like, this is the, the area to be at. Oh, no, 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 no. You stupid. I need the bolt. I need one. I need the other bolt to drop. Now. Oh, my God. Now is the best time to go upstairs to get all of the items. In order to get the cow guy to spawn, we're going to need to kill more enemies. You motherfucking bitch.
Okay, it would be advisable not to get hit again. As he's spawning, that's marking near the end of this entire sequence. I literally cannot believe that it went off. So my terrible gameplay actually allows me to showcase something here, and that is how slow Leon moves when you're in danger. You want to do anything to get out of danger, because first of all, the next hit you're gonna take, you're, you're gonna die, and second of all, your movement speed is significantly reduced. So taking any green herb, any egg, fish, viper, to bring yourself out of danger is worth it. Here's the spawn. And then we're going to burst them down with sniper ammo. We're just going to kill this guy as quickly as possible because his death marks the end of this sequence. You can pick up a jewel off of him. And that's it. And that is the end of chapter 5. So in this next section, we're going to be talking about Ashley a little bit and how she works. So basically, there's two formations in this game that you can have with Ashley. You can have loose formation or tight formation. And generally, you want her to stick close Let's to go. you. You want her to follow you through doors very, very quickly. And she usually ducks when you ADS, so you don't have to worry about hitting her most of the time. But we're going to elaborate a little bit more on that later. But first, we're going to go here and uh, collect all of the items that are out here before we make a save inside. And this is one of the most important saves that you can make. If you're gonna make a first save, make it here because this part is super toxic. Now we're gonna sell all the treasure we have in order to buy the case upgrade and the flashbang recipe. And the reason we buy it here is because we get a discount in this chapter. And then you're also going to get enough money to buy the riot gun because the riot gun is going to be your new shotgun best friend for the rest of the run. We are not even going to go buy the striker. There is no need for the striker. We aren't even going to upgrade the riot gun at all. The riot gun does what it needs to do at level one at its base stats. So like I said, make a save here. Because this next section, a lot of things can go wrong. A lot of things. Here are some examples. So yeah, please save before this sequence. So this next section involves a bunch of enemies in a tight corridor but we can get past them with a little stealth and just one flashbang. We don't need to expend any resources to kill him here. So we're gonna stab this lady in the neck first, and then we're gonna hide behind this wood plank wall. To me, it's not worth rushing him because uh, he usually alerts the enemies if his back isn't completely turned. So now we're going to go upstairs and grab the yellow diamond that's in this chest. They're pretty rare, so everyone counts. There's going to be some large resources here. And once the enemies are alerted, we're going to throw a flashbang right in the middle. And we're going to run right past them. Be careful of the bear traps, bear traps, bear traps. Okay, now you see Ashley is like still hanging back there, right? Where all the enemies are. But she's not going to get grabbed. And the reason why is because when Leon goes past certain doors or checkpoints, enemies just stop chasing him. And if enemies are not chasing him, then they're also not chasing Ashley. So Ashley will actually walk through the door by herself if it's not locked. The extent and leeway of this mechanic 
you know, of her running through the door by herself after sure a checkpoint funny. is, you know, kind of iffy. It's different at certain parts of the game. Like she saw, like in the next sequence where she can be carried away if she's in incapacitated, but in other sections, she'll just get back up. It's different, but I'll let you know in each section. So I just run around this area and I clear the enemies by stealth killing them. Oh, I thought I was going to get that parry because I was sick, but I didn't. There's a yellow herb over here if you want it. Get myself out of danger. Now, I have Ashley actually hide in this locker upstairs. What? Instead of the downstairs one. Okay. By the way, if you want to grab any treasures, you want to do it before the Chainsaw Sisters segment. Grab it all now. You can, also, you can also skip all this stuff if you want to. Oh, be sure to grab the uh, rifle ammo that's sitting here on the windowsill. Because that's what we're going to use to kill the sisters. Oh, fun little fact, you can also um, shoot the locks through just clipping your gun through the door. It's hilarious. Look. So with this next section with the Chainsaw Sisters, there is two methods you can use to defeat them. The first one being my preferred method of bursting them down with a sniper rifle and kiting them around the table. The second being uh, with the attachable mines and bolt thrower and uh, attaching six mines to the ceiling uh, before they spawn in. And when they spawn in, the mines will detonate, killing them instantly. Uh, it's not my preferred method because to me, it's not worth the money or the space for the bolt thrower for this one section. And you don't need it for the Mendez fight because you'll see when we get there. Face, my guy? Okay, I'm gonna throw the flashbang a little higher. So now is a good time to call Ashley from the locker. Usually, there is a guy here, you want to blast him with a shotgun before you make your next move. And then now we're going to put the crank in before we throw the flashbang over the fence. And if everything goes well, it should stun them long enough for you to open the door. But here, it does not go well for me. So I had to actually make a second flashbang in order to get myself out of this. It takes precisely 8 seconds in order to open the door with the crank. You see that I just barely got by here. Very lucky. <laughs> Bro, that was so close. That was too close. Teleport to me. He had a two frame teleport. What the? So, for this upcoming chase sequence here, um, you cannot let Ashley be incapacitated or grabbed by Mendez. It's game over. So, we're gonna shoot this enemy here and clear these two enemies. They actually don't have as much health as you think they do. So you can just shoot them with your pistol. And then shoot this barrel to kill a bunch of enemies. Kill every enemy or parry every attack because you do not want an attack to accidentally hit Ashley and incapacitate her. Because in this section, she can be hauled away by Mendez if she's incapacitated on the floor. And then you would need to expend a flashbang in order to save her. So it's very, very important that she follows really, really close to you and directly behind you 
and she follows you all the way to the side of the bridge. Hey guys, uh, today's my second day of editing. Sorry if my voice sounds different, but we got a major skip that is coming up that I wholeheartedly recommend. But don't worry, I'm going to explain this to you. So what you're going to do is you're going to crouch walk while holding back S into this wall near the merchant here. And once you're crouch walking back near the merchant, what you're going to do is press F to interact with the merchant. And then you're going to immediately hit escape. And then you're going to immediately hit F again to interact with the merchant and then escape again. I do not recommend that you use aim down sights in order to back out of the menu. So you're going to do this in quick succession. So you're going to do F escape, F escape, all while holding back against the wall, crouch walking towards the wall. Yeah, I'll even show you guys how to do this on the keyboard. Uh, don't mind all the cat fur here, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold S right here and then you're gonna press F and I actually reach my pinky finger up here and press escape. So all while I'm holding back on S, I'm holding F, I'm gonna press F, escape, F, escape, like that. F, escape, F, escape, F, escape, F, escape. And it basically oh, utilizes the same concept oh. as the scope skip, which it pushes Leon's character model back into the wall, past the wall. And it's because the wall is so thin that Leon is able to clip through it just by crouching. Now, you're not gonna get this your first time around. I sure as hell didn't get it my first time around. It took me many, many tries, took a huge time loss on it. Um, I actually ended up saving here so I could keep trying and trying again. But once you nail it, I do not recommend that you save here because there is a save just ahead. And up ahead, you can actually see Mendez's boss model before he teleports into the boss room. It's pretty funny. Guess your tap dancing days are over. Don't forget to grab the treasure up here. And that's it. We are at the castle. I wholeheartedly recommend skipping the Mendez fight because of just the resources that you expend on it. Plus, the amount of time you're going to spend on it as well. It's around 6 minutes. The fight is pretty straightforward. You know, shoot him in the eye, but... He has a lot of health. He has two phases. A lot of things can go wrong. You'll end up expending too many resources. I recommend the skip. And sorry guys, I'm missing a little bit of footage here. So what you're going to want to do is go to the merchant save sell everything you need pick up some treasure that's near the merchant in the back and we're going to go down here and shoot these guys to the grate because they drop free money or free stuff and they all die in one pistol what shot what are they Shh. Down. Oh, for this upcoming guy right here we can just run right past him I pause right there so I don't get stunned by the transformation. Grab some items. And fun fact, if Ashley actually gets incapacitated in this area, she gets incapacitated by, by that enemy, you actually don't need to pick her up. You can just run right through the door and the enemy won't follow you and she'll follow you right through the door after she picks herself up. So here in this catapult section, we're going to kill this crossbowman because she follows us if we don't. And we're just going to make a nice circle around while grabbing all of the treasures, getting all the blue medallions, while also destroying all the catapults. It's a nice and safe route. It's not the fastest, but it's nice and safe. So you do need to kill the enemies that are near you because many of them are trying to actively pick up Ashley. So it's always just a better idea to expend the shotgun or rifle ammo to get the kill. Otherwise, you would need to expend a flashbang to save her. Here, she can get stun locked really, really easily with the catapults. But luckily, you can shoot a lot of them from certain areas, like here. You can shoot the red explosive barrels blowing up the, the catapults. You can't shoot every single one, but you can shoot most of them. So that just kind of lowers your chances of being hit by a catapult. Or you or Ashley getting hit by a catapult. She can get stun locked by those catapults too, be careful. It's really terrible I've had that happen. So you can go ahead and uh, destroy the weight here.
Yeah, there's a couple of safe zones, like that house with no roof, safe zone. Here in this upper section, safe zone, you, and none of the catapults can hit you. I snip this guy in the head so he doesn't bother me later when I'm towards the cannon. One explosive barrel here, and another trick shot far across. And there are normal catapults to bother you. Now you can take your time looting this area if you want to. But we pretty much got everything, just in that big circle. Shoutouts to Capcom for the level design. It's impeccable, it's even better than the original. Really, really good. Everything flows really, really well, makes sense. Good job, Capcom. So another thing about Ashley's grab mechanic, so basically if she's being grabbed, she's in the help state, and if you leave, you will get an automatic fail state. So it is important that Ashley is either on her feet or incapacitated when you go through a checkpoint where enemies cannot follow you anymore. That is essential, because if she's being carried away, she will continue being carried away until she's gone. So I just use the cannons here to merc most of the enemies. And you may notice that it's the enemies that are unarmed that are always try to pick up Ashley. It's usually the ones that are unarmed. So sometimes you can make an enemy drop their weapon, like shoot them in the hand, drop the weapon, and then they'll actually turn around and then go for Ashley. It's pretty ridiculous. So here is a big skip coming up, but uh, I actually recommend that you don't save yet. So here at the merchant, we're going to buy the broken butterfly because we get a discount for it. And we're also going to keep it on inventory so we start getting mag ammo. Okay, dude. Chill. A deal well struck. Give that the care it deserves, mate. Stop come back any I love large resources, that's why I always get them. They're worth every single penny. So here is a big skip, but we're actually going to kill all the enemies in this room first. Before we attempt the skip. Because I feel like most people are going to do that. We're not ultra sweaty speedrunners yet. So yes, I do expend the resources here to kill all the enemies. We're gonna do the scope trick again, and now I'm going to teach you a little bit more in depth into how the scope skip actually works from a mechanical standpoint. But you guys gotta wait for me to get good at the game, so just wait for me to kill these enemies. Hold on. So there's actually a few treasures in the room that you can quickly grab without going too much out of the way. So I just sent Ashley up through this hole here. I need you to open it from the other side. And then you can kind of run around and collect things in the room while she's doing that. She takes a little bit of time. But we're actually not going to do the Garador sequence at all. The introduction of the Garador. I'll run back here, and I grab the treasures that are here because I don't feel like they're too out of the way. So in this upcoming skip, I actually recommend that you have the highest sensitivity for your camera as possible. So whether you're on console or PC, you can go to the menu and turn up max sensitivity for normal gameplay and when aiming because it's essential to performing the scope skip. Because when you clip Leon's model through the door by... Um, scoping, looking down and holding back, he's only kind of halfway through the door. What puts him all the way through the door is a quick spin while interacting with the door. So this is exactly what I do. I aim down sights with the scope, I look completely down as far as possible, I back up into the door, and then I quickly spin my mouse around and then interact with the door behind me. And then as I'm interacting with the door, I wiggle my mouse quickly back and forth in order to clip Leon through the door entirely. 
And the combination of him clipping through the door and interacting with the door on the other side, he kind of has a push animation, which kind of finally cements him on the other side of the door. And that is what is essential to pulling off the trick. Oh, and don't make the same mistake I did. Uh, once you've backed up all the way, you don't need to continue holding back while you're spinning around. Because while you're spinning around, if you're holding back, then you're just going to walk to the side. So what you want to do is let go of back and then do the spinning trick while interacting with the door. So this upcoming section is water hell and it's called water hell for a good reason. So you're going to make um, your next save right here. And for me, this was my fifth save. <laughs> Yo, I'm so glad that I saved. Holy God. So in this water hall section, you do not want to kill every single enemy. Running past is essential because you do not have enough resources to kill all the enemies. Regardless, it's totally not worth it. So once we go in through this door, we are going to snipe the two archers on the far side of the water hall. But the thing about it is that the, <laughs> the one on the right will teleport if you just spawn in. So you got to wait for her to like kind of get into position because she'll teleport and you'll miss her sniper shot. So we're going to run down the left side of this hall and grab the items. Here we're going to craft the flash grenade and we're going to get more rifle ammo. Leon, they're here. Ah, the entertainment. Take these two guys out. Just get them out of the way. There's always going to be shotgun shells here. I like to run back here and get this. Is usually something useful like shotgun shells or a grenade. Now we're going to run towards the wheel. On the way back, we're going to blast every enemy in our way. We don't want to get grabbed. We want Ashley to get grabbed. We don't want to get stunned. Speed is important here. While you're interacting with this lever here, turn around and look at the enemies. The enemies tend to be less aggressive. Yeah, they tend like not to run at you when you um Leon, watch out! look at them. So here in this room, we're gonna expend a flashbang. It's a super important flashbang. We're gonna put the crank in first. I'm gonna throw it closer to my feet. And then the flashbang will stun the archers that are up top as well as everybody in this room. So at this point, if Ashley is incapacitated, it is okay. But if she is being carried away, that is not okay. And you need to snipe the guy that is carrying her away. But once you make it past under the bridge, you should be safe because the enemies will stop chasing you. So go ahead and help Ashley up towards the ledge. She can, she can get the, uh, the crank started. And timing is really important here. You have enough time to crank this on your own before helping Ashley. But what you're going to do is prioritize the enemies that are up top versus the enemies that are on the bottom uh, trying to get you. Because you want Ashley to crank everything as soon as possible. She is a lot more passive here than in the previous iteration of this game. If an enemy is looking at her and standing near her, she will just stop and cower and not move on. So you need to clear the way for her to get to the second crank. So every sniper ammo that I'm expending here is worth it because I want her to crank it as fast as possible. I'm basically going to ignore the enemies that are down here. They are not my priority. I'm willing to take damage to keep Ashley cranking, cranking it. Because if she gets interrupted at any point during this animation, then she will start the cranking animation all the way from the beginning. And that is just so slow. But luckily there is a limited number of spawns that do come after, that do come after Ashley. But 
not all of them will get out if you're actually fast enough. And once you touch the stairs that are up front, the enemies will stop chasing you. And Ashley will also be safe. Be, uh, she will also be safe from being picked up. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. I didn't expend that much. And that is Waterhall. One of the hardest sections in the game. For sure. Easier than the original though. I'm getting a lot of shotgun ammo. So at this point you may be asking yourself, um, you know, why can't I just skip this door with the door skip? Well, unfortunately, it seems like you need something to interact with and uh, like something to unlock. And this these doors, games. these like, single doors, so. don't have like a small space that you can squeeze through as well as a lever that you interact with on the other side. So it doesn't seem possible to do it with the small doors, only the big double doors. There is a small door skip, but that's later on. And that is the end of chapter 7. So for this next chapter here, you're going to be without Ashley, thank god. We're going to run over here and grab some treasure. And there's also a bird's nest with a quest item for more spinels. And then now we're going to go uh, fish hunting. And we're not actually going to sell the fish oh, yeah, we're going because to now we're playing it's much more worth it to eat bass them, fishing, man. to be honest. Ooh, don't forget this, Rhinoceros Beetle. There's three in the game, apparently, but they don't show up on treasure maps. I love fish. So these treasures um, are actually super well hidden because they don't show up on any maps. And I've only found this one so far. So this is my sixth save, and it's a really important save to make as well. Because you don't want to do water haul over again. You get a deal on this later, so I'll wait. You know, I sell all my treasures, and then I upgrade my rifle a lot. Because, you know, she's my main squeeze in this game, so, you know, she's getting all the goodies and all my attention. Hey, then you unlock the Matilda now. now. <laughs> so you just got a little preview for what we're going to spend the spinels on. So in this upcoming section with the Gloria Las Plagas guy, the Red Zealot, there's actually two ways you can defeat him, but both involve bursting him down with massive amounts of damage with either your shotgun or your sniper rifle. And it's generally not a smart idea to stay on the first floor and try to snipe him because the enemies on the first floor will swarm you too quickly. So we're going to quickly make our way up to the second floor in order just to get in his face as quickly as possible. Because he's programmed to run away from you. I don't even want to give him that chance. Down here, there might be some enemies, and if there are a lot, you can shoot the red barrel. But you can just pick up the lantern and run straight for the door, ignoring all the other enemies in this room. You're gonna basically go up there and assassinate the Gloria Las Plagas guy. So, in this section... We get introduced to one of the scariest enemies in the game, in my opinion. You can collect this treasure that's in here, but we're going to go around the room picking up all of the tablets. There's a brass pocket watch in here. It's worth 10k, I believe, or 11k. Just a little bit of extra money. The reason we do that is because we're going to get another small key that's coming up right here. And uh, now you're ready to see me solve this puzzle at a third grade level. That should do it. All right. Need to find Ashley. 
No but yeah, the little spider plugs that attach themselves to the back of dudes, man, they're just so dangerous. They have massive movement speed. You're not outrunning them. <laughs> Red Las Plagas guy, my beloved, always hyping up the gang. <laughs> Gloria Las Plagas! Mm, 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 mm. Christ. Hi. Yeah, you need to at the very least knock the spider off their backs because they have so much movement speed they can grab you they can do multi-hitting attacks they can stun lock you doing massive amounts of damage you don't even need to stop by the merchant here to be honest i was just checking so in this next section you're gonna need at least one grenade but for the tactic that i'm using you need two grenades i'll show you why in a second she said meeting you once was enough so here, people usually shotgun blast the two guys in the doorway, but I didn't, and I was actually incredibly lucky not to get hit here. 100% luck. And now we're going to go up the ladder, and we're going to throw a grenade through the grates in order to hit the iron weight on the other side of the gate. Turn around and pull this lever. Super important that you pull this lever. This will allow us to skip huge parts of this level. And then here comes the other skip. Watch out for the guys in this room. We're gonna throw another grenade to hit that iron weight. And we're through. And now we skipped a good chunk and a dangerous chunk at that of this level. To me, those two grenades are so worth it. If you have to jump down and do the sun and moon puzzle manually, you end up taking such a huge okay, risk, plus taking probably huge amounts of damage and wasting more resources than just two grenades. Oh, um, we can pick this up. Here, there is normally oh, oh, a. Oh, I didn't pick up the small key. An uh, ordnate beetle. So dumb. That's what it is. An ordnate beetle key. here. Yeah, I didn't pick up the small key, so I can't. Thank you so much. Incredible. And you destroy those two iron weights as always, and it'll give us access to the cannon. You can actually hide right behind the cannon to dodge the rocks. Kill the dudes at the bottom first. Oh, I forgot to... Um... I realized that I didn't even destroy the door. All right, open for traffic. So we're gonna go ahead and hop down. And if these shield guys are still alive, it's kind of whatever, you can run past them. But if the torch lady is still alive, you need to kill her because she's gonna try to grab you. But yeah, it's not a big deal. As a Whoa! But yeah, those two grenades just minimize your risk of dying so much. Totally worth it. It's a survival horror game. It's about making it to the end. It doesn't matter how you do it. And that is the end of chapter 8. I can't believe that guy. Alright. He's in trouble. We can't just leave him, right? Can I please get some shotgun ammo or something? Actually, no, we'll go to a couple more boxes. There we go. See? I... So for this next section, you actually don't need to save because it's incredibly consistent. There's not a lot of RNG involved. But yeah, we're going to head up to the left here first. Always, we're going to skip that first tower to pull the lever. 
And the reason for that is because once you've pulled all of the levers and all the flags lower, um, mutant dogs are going to spawn and you're going to have a bad time. So we want them to spawn while we're as close to the gate as possible. Yeah, the shotgun is super useful for repelling the dogs, but I always seem to run out of shotgun ammo like around this point. You may be a little bit luckier than me. I go out of my way a little bit just to get some shotgun ammo. I learned this new strat. Like apparently you can you can, you can shoot them through here. Oh, okay. Yeah, these dogs can be really annoying if you don't kill them. Yeah, grab the elegant chessboard. It's definitely worth it. It's worth a lot of money and it's right there. So here we come up to our first tower. And just going to the left there is just super efficient. Because you're kind of moving in a, in a big circle. Word, Ashley? Never would have guessed. I need money. So get your grenade ready here. And we're gonna throw it into the cage to kill two dogs. And one dog will always have one more health than the other. Because it's gonna try to transform. I don't want you transforming. Hmm. Not at all. And you never want the dogs to transform because they become so much more tanky. Ashley. Hey. And then a dog is gonna guaranteed spawn right here. Hmm. Yeah, no more shotgun ammo. Amazing. Then coming up right here is the second lever. I'm always short on shotgun ammo in this section. And now enemies are gonna spawn and try to catch Ashley, but you can actually hit two trick shots with the sniper rifle in order to stop them from getting Ashley. But if you're a pro gamer like me and you just miss here, we're gonna try out a different method. Leon, here. Ashley, run. All right, actually, uh, I'm gonna try the flashbang method. Yeah, and this is the third and final lever. And the reason we pull this one last is because it's the closest to the exit. Mutant dogs spawn after you pull the last lever. And we want to be as now close to the exit as possible. Wait, do I have a, a flashbang? Okay, I do. Yeah, you want to be careful here because Ashley can be very easily taken away. But once you get in through this door, you're good. There we go. There we go. So here in this Chimera puzzle section, uh, there are some useful tips down. that you can employ. And we can also really go around picking up all the blue medallions as well. Because they're all in the way. Uh, I always miss that Alexandrite hanging on the statue there. Look, there's a statue up there. But yeah, we usually do the dining hall puzzle first because it's oh, the easiest. The dining hall. Eat here? No thanks. Leon! Looks like we figured it out. This one was pretty well hidden. That blue medallion that's in between the curtains. Make sure to grab the head on the way out. I always forget to do that. Like, there's been so many playthroughs where I always forget to take the snake head. And I like to do the gallery next. 
Don't forget about this blue medallion on the chandelier. Now coming up is one of the first skips ever found, I think. And it feels very intentional. Actually, a lot of these skips feel intentional. All you need is a hand grenade and you need to throw it before the cutscene triggers. Because the guy that pulls the lever is hiding right behind that pillar. And if you nade him or flashbang him before he gets a chance to pull it, then this sequence where you get lowered down into a room full of enemies just never happens. Very, very worth it. Flash grenade here. At this point, make sure Ashley is right behind you. Make sure she's behind you. Ash, come on. Ash. Because she can get grabbed, she can get incapacitated. But sometimes you're lucky and she just follows you right out. have to make sure that she doesn't get grabbed. I didn't want to accidentally shoot her. Next one is the Armadudas. Oh, yes. Have a grenade. Uh, yes, yeah, Daddy Capcom. Give me more heavy grenades. I'm picking up a lot of stuff in this section because I want mag ammo and heavy grenades for the next chapter. Too bad. I think you'd look pretty dashing. Okay, let's try not to die here. Stay up there. So here in this section, you can pick up all the items before the fighting starts, or you can do it afterwards. It doesn't matter. It just depends on how full your inventory is. That's the reason I didn't save because I never die here. But as soon as you go for the head, the Amaduras were the Amaduras are gonna spawn. So just for the sake of speed, I start expending some ammo. Do you not? Even though Ashley is very, very useful during this section and she throws those blue lanterns I mean, at the Armadudas, uh, she can be kind of glitchy and weird. She doesn't always she like to toss it when you want to. It's kind of frustrating. Feel free to throw that whenever you'd like. And you can end up with a situation like this Bro, don't stop. where the guy just refuses to walk into the fire. So basically the Amaduras spawn like spawn one after another. So you kill one, another one spawns. Uh with a total of seven. Anytime. Well, seven Amadudas. But yeah, once their helmet is off, just snipe them. Yeah, he's not gonna get into the fire in time. Don't take the risk of going up to them and shotgun blasting them. They have way too much range. Here, the blue lantern fire ran out, so I had to manually go up and take off the helmet myself. Like I said, Ashley isn't always the most right, accurate. Really hard one. Use her to your advantage, but don't rely on her, is what I'm trying to say. Of course. Didn't get hit by the fire. Uh, the viper? Please, please, please. Okay. So for an cool. easy kill, we can go ahead and I think I'm just use hit. a flashbang to kill all three of them oh. at the same time. Oh, we got staggered by the by the fire. Easy peasy. I'm lucky. I got it got staggered There's by the fire. There's even a guaranteed flashbang in this room. If the game wasn't trying to you sure give you a big hint on what you should you? do. No. Thanks for your help. 
I really did the trick. <laughs> and that is the last head. I was lucky AF. We don't need this, but we can sell it. The cubic device, you don't need it. There is a side quest here to kill all the rats, but the last rat that we need for the side quest is a little too out of the way, so I decide to skip this particular side quest. Yeah, I was- I healed. I was like, ready to tank the hit. <laughs> Alright, actually, I'm gonna film this cutscene because it's actually pretty cool. Stay back. Dude, like, this shows how much of a badass Leon is, this entire scene. Like, so sick. <laughs> Alright. Let's not die at the Ashley part, thanks. So here in this Ashley section, it's pretty straightforward. I'll just fast forward over Whoa. the irrelevant parts because it's kind of slow paced. But if you know the solution to the clock puzzle, then you can skip a good part of Ashley's level. Is that a clock? <laughs> so for this section, we're just going to pull the bells from right, left, right, left. Just hold up your lanterns if any of the armor dudes get close. Okay, very small chance you'll die here. There you go, easy. For this next part here, just run in a straight line. It's very unlikely that the Amodudas are going to hit you. Watch out for this guy though. Okay, so upcoming is a little technique that I employ with frame rate. And the reason why I turn down my frame rate during this particular section is because it's actually easier to squeeze past enemies on lower frame rates than it is on higher frame rates. So since I have a PC, I turn it all the way down to 30 FPS, the minimum. So I can risk-free squeeze through this guy. Like I just, I Vaseline myself and I just squeeze through super easily. It is noticeably harder to squeeze through him on higher frame rates. I've tested it. But squeezing through him does seem like the best method. Because I've tried kiting him back to the elevator and that just didn't work out. Almost there. But yeah, when you insert the emblem, that is the end of chapter 9. In this part, it's actually very important that you save chapter 10. If you're going to save anywhere, please, God Almighty, please save in this area. Because this next section is absolute turbo cancer. 
your fate is completely left up to whether the novistadors are gonna let you move and trust me in my experience they don't let you breathe so go ahead and upgrade your rifle upgrade anything repair your body armor um repair your knife and get ready for the next section because I'm telling you, clench your butt cheeks. Clench your butt cheeks, ladies and gentlemen, because this next section is cancerous. So here I kill the enemies in order to perform a door skip that's coming up. Now you don't have to perform this door skip because the time loss is still pretty small compared to other door skips. But I decided to do it this time because I just wanted to show it off. And if you do go up the stairs to the um, right there, there is some additional supplies like a first aid spray. So it's not always a bad idea to, you know, skip this skip. <laughs> so in this upcoming Novisador room, you're going to see me looking at the ground a lot while I'm moving. And the reason is because apparently looking at the ground makes the Novisadors less aggressive and it also prevents them from pouncing on you and grabbing you. But again, this could be 100% copium. You want to blast this one or he's going to hit you while you're going up the ladder. Oh, you're piecing for me? Uh, yeah, I have to. Yeah, the enemies are right in front of you, on the ground. They're they're gonna hit you, so they need to get blast. And you get the blast. Then equip flashbang, and throw it immediately when you jump down. Yeah, the flashbang stun the Novisadors especially long. Look down on the ground. They don't exist if you look at the ground. Oh no no Oh no Just look at the pretty lines Leon Just look at the pretty lines There we go You bitch You bitch I got hit. Ah, you. Stop. Stop that right now. <laughs> 10 out of 10 game. Game of the year. So upcoming in this section is the infamous double Gerador room. This room is hard for a variety of reasons. First of all, there's two fucking Gerdors. Second of all, there is... A lot of enemies that spawn seemingly endlessly. There is a limit to how many they spawn, but I've tested it, it's way too many enemies that spawn. So don't expend the resources to try to kill them. Focus on the Gerdors. The guy didn't. Even though things didn't go too well for me in this room, it's still important to discuss some of the strats that I used in this room. So there is a speedrun strat consisting of four grenades and shooting the Garador free, the armored Garador free, and then shooting the bell in between the railing in order to get the, the two Garadors to clump up near the bell. As you can see, it didn't go very well for me in this instance. They didn't clump up, it's okay. we, we but it's okay. What do we do? We improvise, adapt, and overcome. So then I was able to get them to clump up a little bit more so I could expend some more grenades. You're going to become a human grenade launcher. Okay. That, that last one didn't get him. And the grenades that you toss out are going to help crowd control the other enemies that are around you. Giving you space to make sniper shots at their back if you need to. Yeah, I was dumb here. Oh, 
That was an incredible sequence oh of events oh that just occurred, oh if you didn't notice. I was basically one hit away from dying. I was able to parry the flail, and then someone threw an axe from off screen, but it accidentally hit the Gyarador and it didn't hit me. And then someone else threw an axe and I parried that as well. You can go around the room and pick up all the items if you want to, or you can just grab the horns and unlock the door straight away. I think that, um, like, whenever, like, a cutscene like this starts, they stop whatever animation they're in. So it's really, really good. So this next section in the depths is pretty self-explanatory. You know, just follow everything through and kill the four Novistadors that are on your way to the ladder. Just look for the eyes in the water. So here in this section, you need to pick up the Elegant Crown. It's the most valuable item in this game. And there are only two of them, unless you have the expanded map DLC. Yeah, it sells for 100,000 uh, pesetas. When you have the uh, the five color bonus. I mean, that wasn't like a great uh, Gerdor room, to be honest. That was like pretty shit. So upcoming is the infamous Verdugo fight. But before that, we're going to grab this red barrel that's right above us here. If you don't have a red barrel for the elegant crown, But yeah, the reason we get the Elegant Crown is because we want to sell it to buy the Rocket Launcher. Normally, you would have to wait for the elevator for Verdugo for 6 minutes. I believe it's 6 minutes until the elevator arrives. Or you can just blast him with a Rocket Launcher and make that 30 seconds. To me, it's worth every single penny <laughs> Come. to reduce the risk of this fight. I need more money. So I basically sell all the treasure that I have in order to have enough money to buy the rocket launcher. Welcome. It doesn't matter. It's so satisfying. Just do it. <laughs> I probably don't have room for it. You're going to get more money in the island. So... There's no point in hoarding that money now. It is so, so worth it to expend the rocket launcher on Verdugo. I'll hand this over when you've got the space. Not my place to say, really, but sometimes things are more interesting if you keep a level playing field. Don't you find? I agree, Mr. Merchant. Any... Oh, no, 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 don't Time. say it. Yeah, and now that you have the confidence of the rocket launcher, you don't even need to save here. You can just move on. Just take your time, strolling through. Don't even worry about it. Grab a Mai Tai, kick back. And you don't need to necessarily grab all the boxes on the way to pulling the power switch because you're going to come back this way. Yeah, I tried killing Verdugo on my first playthrough with my default weapons, and I pretty much used every single round. Like, I only had pistol ammo left. You have to spend a lot of resources in order to kill him. Oh, you're kidding me. And there is actually a very easy skip that you can do with Verdugo if you don't have the money to kill him you can actually do the scope trick where you push yourself into the elevator wall to prevent your body model from being targeted by verdugo we'll talk about it more later during the run but yeah just nitrogen this full point diuretical at him bada bing bada boom he's dead 
Like no need to stress about it anymore. Now we can go around taking our time, collecting all the items. And you want to collect the items that are down here in this basement because they all drop good items. Like they don't just drop money. Like the crates actually drop sick shit. Like heavy grenades and magnum ammo. There's a first aid spray, gunpowder, and uh, a yellow diamond here, I believe. It was a yellow diamond, right? Yeah, it was a yellow diamond. But yeah, rifle ammo, rifle ammo. Ooh, look at that magnum ammo. I got so lucky with that. You see, like, the rocket launcher makes it so worth it to keep all of this ammunition that you just got. Money well spent. Good fucking drops, dude. Good fucking drops. Damn it, dude. I keep wanting to, like, make it out of the castle, like, before, but I'm just too slow. And this marks the end of chapter 10. Why help me though? What's in it for you? <laughs> no, so we're gonna make a save here. This is my um my eighth save. How many times have I so as you can see, we're two saves ahead for each chapter. You don't need to buy or sell anything to the merchant, but if you need to repair body armor or repair your knife, then I would do it now. No. The reason I would save here is because there are many, many, many things that can go wrong in this chapter. But I wouldn't worry too much about this section. As long as you have some finesse, I think you're going to be fine. Just keep your shotgun close. Keep your flash grenades close. You're going to be fine. Yep, we always save here in case I'm moving. Yeah, there's chainsaw guys, there's grabbers here, there's dynamite guys. It's a fiesta is what I'm trying to say. This box always has some good shit, I don't know why, but it does. Blast this guy out of the way. And you can actually run by the chainsaw girl. Yeah, she'll just miss you. So while you're going down the stairs, you need to make sure that the chainsaw people are not following you. If they're really close, you need to turn around and parry them. Hello? What are you doing here? Shoot this red barrel. Control the crowd. Be wary of all the dynamite. Blast these two guys out of the way. There's gonna be one more guy. And once you pick up the dynamite, you need to turn around and throw either a hand grenade or a flash grenade. Flash grenades are better. It's gonna give you enough time to run away. Dude, what a god! All these dynamite guys should trap for Overwatch League. Now, there's normally a skip here that you can do with the rocket launcher. You can just destroy the debris with the rocket launcher, but since we used the rocket launcher in the last section, we can't use it for this skip. You should watch the corridor, by the way, because sometimes the chainsaw people do come and chase you down the corridor. So just be wary. But once you're at the actual debris, they'll just turn around and run back to their spawn. So upcoming here, we got the double El Gigante fight. But it's pretty simple. We're gonna do a comfy strat rather than a sweaty speedrunner strat. 
just gonna flashbang the first El Gigante, the naked one. And then now we're actually gonna let Luis do his thing. This other one's not gonna be easy. We're gonna wait for him to grab the dynamite. There's a speedrun strat where you can use several heavy grenades and magnum ammo in order to burst down the armored El Gigante. But that's a little sweaty and I feel more comfortable just waiting for Luis and the dynamite. Like it's just one pistol shot versus a bunch of magnum ammo. Hi Luis, anytime. Yeah, just try to lure the El Gigante to the pillar in order to make the transition from Lewis appearing to him putting the dynamite on his back more smooth. Because if he's just right there at the bottom, then the next cutscene will just happen right away. Here, El Gigante was not behaving. I had to wait for a better positioning. Yeah, it was slow and not that great, but we got through it with very little resources and almost no healing. So we can just fast forward through a lot of the mine section because, I mean, to be honest, it's really easy. If you are having a hard time with the minecart section, then you probably shouldn't be playing it on professional difficulty. Oh my god, if I... I would have uninstalled this game if I missed that. For this upcoming section here, the only thing you need to watch out for is the dynamite guy. I have lost a run here before because he'll throw the dynamite against the wall and then the explosion will hit you on the other side. So be careful. So this next upcoming hive section is not as cancerous as the Novistador room and the upper castle, but there's no need to save here. And then we can actually shoot three of the hives right from where we start in the level. Three out of four. Just free spinels. Yeah, just do whatever you need to do to keep these guys off of you. Use your shotgun shells. That's what they're there for. Give me a break. We can make it if we circle around. Come on. Pain in my ass. Yeah, I got a lot of shotgun shells. Don't forget this yellow herb here. Not making good time. I hate insects. Take care of them for me, would ya? How about you open fire and And there is the last one. Watch out for that one on the wall, always gets me. Always destroy this red barrel because there is actually a secret treasure behind the wall. 
Yeah, it's a gold bar. It's worth a lot of money. Dude, and you lose so much walk speed when, when you're like uh, in combat. So much walk speed. I'm just gonna look at the ground. Uh, or not. So we're gonna stop by the merchant hidden in this cave here so that's a to make a save you, before the Krauser fight. Always save before the Krauser fight. Good stuff, mate. <laughs> nice work. I got something so we're gonna sell all our treasure, and what we're actually gonna do is upgrade our knife so we can end the Krauser fight faster. That's the reason we make a save here, because we want Krauser the least amount of time to fuck us up. Because the Krauser fight can snowball. Like you miss one parry and then you miss another and then another and the next thing you know, you're dead. So it is advisable to save before the Krauser fight. Yeah, the Krauser fight in this remake is so much better than the original. Even though quick time events have their place in gaming, this is a much needed upgrade. This fight is excellent. You are rewarded for hitting all your perfect parries by getting a huge stun on him, but you also get the leeway of normal parries as well in this fight. You do not have to hit perfect parries, but you make the fight a lot slower if you don't hit the perfect parries. So the thing about this fight is you want to hit Krauser with the quick stab in syncopated beats. You don't want to ma mash it because uh, he'll deflect it just like that if you mash it too quickly. So you kind of want to catch him in a attacking animation and basically stun lock him from doing anything. Aggression is the name of the game here. You want to be as aggressive as he is. You do not want to sit back and just parry attacks. You want to end this fight really quickly. Krauser is an amazing fighter. He has pump fakes. He has kicks yo this guy is a giga chad all right he's the original giga chad before leon but yeah that was semi clean that wasn't the best but yeah if you don't know what you're doing here it's definitely a good idea to save here enough play rookie enough play rookie what a disappointment. <laughs> Dude, Krauser's voice actor is so good. 10 out of 10. I love his voice actor. Over the top evil. Oh, rip Louis. Looking good, eh, my friend? And such a loss to the ladies of the world. Don't talk. Dude, I will never not laugh at that line. That's so good. Take this. And with the end of the Krauser fight, that marks the end of chapter 11. So in this upcoming section, we're going to hit the merchant next. And now you're going to find out why we've been doing some of the side quests to get some spinels. And the reason we're doing it is because we're going to go get the Matilda and the Matilda stock. And the reason I like getting the Matilda is because it's basically a TMP with the three, with the three round burst. It does what the TMP does, but better. And the reason for that is because handgun ammo drops in abundance and by this point in the game you should have a lot of it and the matilda is gonna make the clock the clock tower just that little bit easier and more consistent so go ahead and make a save here too before you hit up the clock tower because there's a lot of things that can go wrong in the clock tower. If you don't want to save here, it's not the end of the world. Doing the Krauser fight again before the clock tower is, is not that bad. So here at the merchant, you're going to want to repair all your body armor, your knife, um, upgrade your weapons, get the Matilda um, before you hit up the clock tower. And also the gunpowder that you can get from trading is probably the second most 
or it could be the most useful item depending on what type of playthrough you want to do in the game. Uh, gunpowder is extremely useful because you can just buy the 10 gunpowder and make magnum ammo. So it comes in clutch when you need it. As you can see here, I'm just swimming in supplies. I'm not hurting at all. I need shotgun shells pretty badly. I'm gonna see if these ones drop, um, if There's the, the bases tower. in the front drop shotgun shells. Ashley. If they don't, then I have to make it. Yeah, the riot gun gets a huge opportunity to shine in the castle. It shows why it is the S tier shotgun because of its fire rate. And it does what the striker does as well, but with a tighter spread. Oh, uh, yep, there we go. This is why we don't make shotgun shells. Oh, I am actually going. So here in this clock tower, we're not going to take our time and collect items from everybody. We are going to just run straight through. Blasting people out of our way and killing key targets. However, I'm afraid it ends here. Expel this intruder. So it's important to blast anyone who's potentially going to grab you out of the way. You gotta really flex that shotgun. Okay, my cat, thank you. Thank you for walking all over my fucking keyboard. Thank you. You. Oh, and you can shoot this TNT barrel at the back of the Clockwork Castilian to keep him from spewing fire. By the way, the fire doesn't even do that much damage to you. You can just run through it, you can tank it. That lady always grabs you, you have to be careful. I thought it was cheeky here. The range, I mean, it makes sense that um, these side guys would have insane range though. Blast this lady, always. You really know how to make someone feel welcome. Yeah, the okay. ball falling on you is an insta-death. This is pretty clean, uh, I'm gonna like get... Hero is actually quick enough to make it all the way up top before he dropped the third ball. Here's some pearl. Here is a mirror with pearls and rubies. They're worth a lot. It's not too bad to grab on the way. But yeah, it, in this sequence right here, you're just going to be running around. But first. We're going Very to well. take uh, out the red show. zealot that spawns in this iron cage here. And try not to get cucked by the iron bars like I did. Uh, of course, I got cucked by the middle don't give up, do you? Oh, I killed him in one shot. Really so this is why we got the Matilda. We're going to be expending all of our handgun ammo now. Matilda. The Matilda is going to be useful for taking out the archers. It's just a good secondary weapon to have. It's a good complement to your sniper rifle. But yeah, I would just run in a circle while scanning with my mouse and just preventing anybody from hopping on the le uh, the elevator. You see there, I ran out of shotgun ammo. Had to adapt and finish him off with the bolt action. And there's going to be a second red zealot coming up. You need to take him out. Because he's going to make your life hell if he transforms the enemies. And he also stuns you like that. That's annoying. Here, you may be running out of shotgun shells. Don't worry, that's normal. Every shotgun ammo that you use to keep enemies from being on the elevator is worth it.
Yeah, running around the elevator too also helps me dodge uh, bolts from the archers. And that is the clock tower. Yeah, the Matilda makes it a lot more consistent in my opinion. Yeah, the Matilda makes this section so much more It's just a really safe strat. Like, I don't love the Matilda, but man, is it just a better TMP. There's gonna be a treasure here you can grab. Don't worry about the archers on the other side. I've just walked across these planks before and they've never hit me. You can kill them later. So over here, we're just gonna grab everything in this room before we make a save. And I do recommend making a save here, wasting a save here because you're gonna be throwing the golden egg at Salazar's face and I have missed it <laughs> in, in several occasions. <laughs> and having to do the clock tower again sucks. So I just make a save here just in case I miss the egg. Got something new for you. All you're gonna need in this fight is the broken butterfly, your sniper rifle, and the golden egg. That will be enough to finish him off. By God, please do not accidentally consume the chicken egg. I've done that before. Do not accidentally consume it. Look carefully in the menu and highlight over equipped. Okay, I have used that accidentally before. It was terrible. Even though it hit me in the head. Here I upgrade the broken butterfly because we're gonna sell it anyways and we got it at a discount earlier, so we're gonna make our, our money back. So the Ramon Salazar fight. I actually love Ramon in this iteration of the game. His presence is a little less felt, but I like his design and voice acting in this version more. So good. You talk too much. So we're gonna open up with the sniper shot, get some extra damage in, and then we're gonna equip our golden egg and toss it right at his head. And that will do 60% of his health instantaneously. And then we're just gonna mag dump with our broken butterfly into his face. Just empty entirely. And then finish him off with your sniper rifle. He should not have much health left. And that's it. Literal 10 second fight. Please Capcom never take this out. Never take out the golden egg exploit. Please. You can go around the room collecting the items. There's some goodies in here. It's worth it. Oh, and by the way, do not reload the broken butterfly. We're going to be selling it at the island. We can just fast forward until we get to the boat. The armor dudes just don't get hit by them. And once you reach the boat, it marks the end of chapter 12. And now we're on to chapter 13, the island. So the island. The island is going to be by far the quickest act in the game for you. It's going to be the quickest section because of many of the skips that we're going to be using. You don't have to worry about resources as much until key certain fights, yeah, like the Krauser fight. But the island is going to feel real breezy compared to the castle. We're going to make key saves here to make our lives a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and disable this turret before we make a save okay, and hit up the point, merchant. I, I was still at the castle, so we're making better time than we did. I've got some new items in... That's good. I believe this was my twelfth save. Welcome. Got some rare things on sale. So at this point I'm one ahead. 
for each chapter. I'll buy it at a high price. Good is new. Stranger. Sell the broken butterfly. Don't need it anymore. I'll pay a pretty penny for that. I don't need anything else here, to be honest. You can just move on. So in this upcoming section, you can actually skip a large majority of the sneaking around puzzle with one grenade and a couple of shotgun blasts. So we're going to take out these guys here to make sure that they don't interrupt us while we're throwing our grenade. Don't worry about the, the machine gun guy. Take your grenade, toss it over this archer right here behind him, and it should explode, drawing the turret fire to him instead. And as for getting past this machine gun guy, you have to try to bait out the kick or get lucky getting around him because he will try to do a double kick to prevent you from going through the door. But don't worry, once you're past the turret, the enemies around you are a lot more passive because they don't want to get they don't want to run through the turret and, and get fired upon. So here just shotgun blast any guys out of the way, get up the ladder and then you're home free. And that's that entire section done in less than half the time. Here, the only person we need to kill is the rocket launcher guy, so he doesn't ruin our day. And depending on whether the enemies are to the left or right, you're going to adapt. So for this specific situation, there were more enemies downstairs than where they were upstairs, so I decided to go to the left. Yeah, you can just run past these guys. Once you're in this door, it's clean. You don't need to worry about them anymore. This is where they keep an Ashley. And in, in this upcoming section, there is an elegant crown in a chest that you might want to get if you're a little short on money. If you don't feel like you can afford the infinite rocket launcher by the end. Not the infinite rocket launcher, sorry, the rocket launcher. Kill these enemies here or run past them, doesn't matter. Here, it, you're going to actually notice the significant difference between the, um, just how much ammo it takes to kill enemies on the island. I think the game is scaled really, really well. Good job, Capcom. Yeah, you're going to notice that it no longer takes just one sniper ammo to kill the, the Ganados anymore. The soldier granados are a lot more tanky than their village counterparts. So if you have an unupgraded pistol, you're really going to feel it here. Okay, heavy grenade. Like but your pistol is mainly used to hit trick shots and interact with the environment. Where you're going to be killing with is usually your shotgun or your sniper. Explosive there. So here's pretty simple. We can sneak right past this guy and he won't notice us walking behind him. So we can quickly grab the uh, ammo that's in the locker here. It's random, but it always drops ammo in my case. I blast these guys so they don't interrupt me. Yeah, that guy got to me, so I had to blast him out of the way. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he doesn't get to me in time. There's a treasure in here. It's always a velvet blue. Ashley. So here with the sledgehammer guy, you can just run past him up the ladder. Because once we're back, he's not going to be here anymore. So no reason to expend ammo. All these people can be ignored as well. Yeah, enemies tend not to chase you very far at all. Yeah, there's always a guaranteed hand grenade in there. Up here, this guy's gonna try to get friendly with you. Don't let him. Yum yum yum, delicious fish. 
here. You don't need to stop by the merchant. There is nothing to buy or sell from him. But me, you know, being like super ADHD. So, another famous scene from the original game, the regenerator section. But we're actually going to do something. We're going to do a little glitch. Let's call it tech. Let's call it tech instead of a glitch. We're going to do this little tech that prevents the regenerators from attacking us. So, we're going to pull the lever. Head on over to the puzzle. Um, but actually, we're going to head in here first okay. to grab um, the red barrel to some gunpowder and also free first aid spray. This stuff is not too out of the way. So this puzzle is easy. It's literally just one, two, three, one, two, one, two, confirm. One, two, three, right. one, two, okay. one, two, confirm. That's it. So, once you grab the key card, the regenerator is going to spawn. Do I make it past them here? Okay, I do. Fuck are you? Oh. oh yeah. And he that, grabs that's, me. That's why you don't want to shoot him. God. That bitch. <laughs> I, things that didn't go too well there, but Jesus I lived. Christ. So it's fine. He's gonna be right by the door. I hear him. But yeah, the key to getting past the regenerators is just to shoot them in the leg. Yes, they flop around after you shoot them in the leg, but they're stunned for quite a bit. They're just kind of laying on the ground there for like two seconds, and that's plenty of time for you to run past them. So here it comes, guys. So watch closely. We're gonna use the exact same game. scope trick that we use for the doors, but we're gonna use it just to clip ourselves into the environment instead. So here comes the regenerator to fuck up your day. This place. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna point our scope at the ground and then walk into the wall and just keep looking at the ground. And that's it. Your body model is within the wall and you cannot be targeted by the regenerator until you unscope. I actually would like to heal. And then once you hear the beep, just unscope. The guy might grab you, but that's fine. He would have hit you a lot more if he didn't do this trick. I really hope that this does not get patched out. <laughs> And uh, I went the wrong way here. I was a dummy. You can actually go down the hall right here. Right to your destination. I was dumb. I went a little bit too long. But yes, you're supposed to turn right. But you, I just went a little too long. And that's it. That's the regenerator rooms. Made simpler by one little trick. Regenerators hate this one trick. So we're going to kill everybody in this room here and in the next room because we do not want them interrupting us while we're doing the puzzle. I hate the phase shield, guys. So there's a lot of goodies in this room that you want to grab. There's like a red herb, there's gunpowder, submachine gun ammo. There's a hand gang there's a hand grenade right there in the center of the room. Here's your biometric uh, scope, biosensor scope. And we're going to use it to kill the regenerator that has the wrench. 
And you don't need to kill all the other regenerators in the room because it's not worth it. The jewels that they drop for you are not worth it. Just go straight for the one with the wrench. And if you get a clean lineup, you can actually shoot two nodes. Two plagas at the same time. Pretty much every regenerator in this room allows you to shoot two plagas at once. You just gotta find the right angle. Oh, and the wrench is completely random of uh, which regenerator that it spawns in. So you gotta equip the scope and find out which one it is. So here, the exact same method can be applied here. We're just gonna look for a napkin that's on the ground here, and we're just gonna look at it. We're just gonna look at the ground. And if you look at the ground, you know, it, they can't hurt you. It's okay. The Ganados don't exist. It's not real. Uh, place with the gen- yep. Oh, well, I guess you're kind of pushing me towards the key card, which is good. Key card over. Right? Okay, now coming up, there's gonna be a dynamite guy right outside this door. Blast him! Blast him! By God, blast him. He will fuck up your day. Yeah, the dynamite needed to go 100%. And boom, we're done with the key guard puzzle. That's the end of chapter 13. Shit. Man, look at Leon. What a man of complete focus and sheer willpower. Leon Wick. I love Leon's depiction in our Resident Evil 4 remake. He's just such an absolute badass. So coming up, you can collect the crystal ore that's in this room right here. It's worth 15k. So here you can actually do um, Could you give me a, boost? a scope skip here. But this was actually my first time doing it in this section. So I didn't get it. So I decided just to send Ashley over the top. Got it. And I just was like practicing it. Uh -huh. I was trying to see if I could, who could get it faster, <laughs> Ashley or me. I tend to have huge problems um, doing the scope trick if I use the biometric sensor because I can't really see because everything is like one color, everything's just blue, so it's hard to see what I'm doing. Sure. But yes, you can use the scope trick to skip through that double door there. So in this next section, we don't need to grab anything, we don't need to talk to the merchant, we don't even need to save, because we're gonna skip this entire level right now. So normally, you gotta go in a big circle and go through a, a, a forklift sequence, not a forklift sequence, a wrecking ball sequence in order to unlock the elevator that's up ahead here, but... You can just clip through it with the scope trick. Let's find another way. Yeah, spin around while unscoping, interact, we go. and then boom. Second try. You just skipped ninety percent of this level, saving you like oh, yeah. six minutes. Always press the elevator first. Ooh, while it's coming. Yeah. You can uh, just activate the elevator to come down first before you start collecting this stuff. Actually, you can activate the elevator and then unlock the door for Ashley. You still have enough time before the elevator arrives. Yeah, I doubt the... That door no, skip is I, gonna be taken out thinking, at all. We work well together, don't we? Some of the speedrun tech in this game right? feels very intentional by the developers. Very, very intentional. 
Especially the one with the grenade in the gallery. That one feels very intentional. Well, either way. First, we have to make it out of here. You're no fun. Yeah, there's a couple barrels you can grab here, but unnecessary. We're just gonna head right into this room. And there's going to be a crystal ore that's in the back here. Everything else in this room is just kind of like files and interactables. Wait, do I even, story I feel fluff. Like I have so much fucking money that I, I don't need it anymore. Well, I do need it for the uh, Krauser fight. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna grab this because of the Krauser fight. I didn't even collect the yellow orb that was there. So seven. Sadler, you bastard. So this is the section before the Krauser fight. There's a couple goodies here if you're low on supplies. Yeah, and this side room here is always a lot of stuff. Here in this section, you can either stun these guys or get them out of the way because we're going to go inside of the tent in order to collect the gold bar that's in the treasure chest here. They're worth a lot of money, so it's worth to grab. So the crowds are fight. Okay, we're gonna definitely say first because this part right here um requires a lot of so the things that you'll need i put away my shotgun because i had so much stuff i had to make room for it we won't be needing our shotgun in this next section i basically sell a lot of treasures in order to afford the killer seven and its upgrades Welcome. And the reason Got we're going to do that is because, sales, again, bursting down Krauser with Stranger. huge amounts of damage is going to prevent him I'll from fucking us up. Any. Oh, you can also sell the biometric Honestly, sensor too. Because be we don't need it anymore. Yeah, repair your knife, your body yeah, armor, deserves, and then take your See killer seven means, as far as you can. Like yourself, you might not get max power, but that's fine. We just need what it to, to spank. We're gonna spank Krauser with it. And I was very lucky to get a lot of Magnum ammo here. So here's what you do for the first part right here, okay? This first sequence. You can end it very quickly. Two Magnum, round is in, two Magnum rounds in his head first. And then one sniper round to the head. And usually that's enough to send him to throw the flashbang. That's it, you don't got a knife fight with him. Even though he gets his own health bar in the final fight, the final section of this fight, um, it's still worth expending the Magnum ammo. Yeah, why let him get close to you to do more damage? So right here, you're gonna jump down. The box is a bait because Krauser's gonna appear behind you. Have your gun ready to blast him. Right here, you can go ahead and interrupt him. And you can shoot the laser traps while you're close to them. You just don't have to activate them as long as you're not tripping over it, you can shoot it from the side. I really like this whole level, by the way. This whole entire level. Introducing Krauser and his uh, covert tactics and shit. I really liked it. Like, all the set pieces in this game are just better. Than the original. 
So here, you can get past this section really fast if you have some Ultra Instincts. One, two, three. One, two. I believe I miss it here. Yeah, I miss it. See, you can Ultra Instinct the arrows. But you're not always going to get it. And once he's like up close to you like that, like you, you can't dodge it anymore. You have to time it exactly right. I believe if you get it perfectly, it sh I think he fires off three arrows you can dodge. Here, I hit him with the magnum ammo to get him down. Snipe him for some damage. And then turn around, evade. Oh, he didn't run into it. I thought he would run into it. Usually he does. So here I don't get a great time because he didn't land into the mine. You're really doing this? It's not too late. You and me are two sides of the same coin. I guess that means we'll never see eye to eye. Yeah, once he starts running off like that, let him. That was not a great fight. Are we done here, Krauser? I told you. Again. But I had so much supplies that I wasn't tripping. I wasn't worried about it. Watch the sick parry. You've lost it completely. Watch me miss this parry right here. Yeah. I swear to God, that parry is like one frame or two so frames. Power? Dude, that shit's like oh, awful, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I've only parried that once, once in my entire play, like my 100 hours in this game. Grenade. That's a fish, bro. I love fish. I can't wait to see you ride. Dude, like, look at how much. Like, look at my <laughs> my munitions, bro. I have so many. So we're gonna use the magnum to fight him here. You can end this fight a lot quicker if you didn't suck like me. Because I miss quite a bit of magnum oh, shit. shots here. But yeah, bait and shoot. Bait and shoot. I parried it. Oh my god. Bait and shoot. Don't miss like me. So in this fight, it's actually a good idea to strafe to his left. Well, your left, his right. His right hand is a lot shorter than his giant left blade hand, obviously. So circling to the left is gonna be your best deal. His shorter side. The way you're going, there won't be anything left to protect. You'd have known that once. Yeah, usually if you try to strafe towards his Giant blade side, you're gonna get nicked. I didn't know a damn thing. Now I do. You can't deny this power. Imagine strike. Yeah, but don't worry, you can outspace a lot of stuff just with good movement. That was okay. But yeah. I missed like three mag shots. Don't worry about the magnum that you're expending during this section because we're gonna be selling the killer seven by the end.
The rest of this game is now pretty breezy. Badass Krauser move. All right. <laughs> this is the RNG section. This is the RNG section. So, in chapter 15, this is going to be by far the hardest or easiest section based on your luck. There's a lot of luck involved here, but that's why we're going to make a save here. Because this section is cancer, but I've also had amazing luck here as well. It's completely RNG. So at the merchant, you don't actually have to sell the Killer 7 just yet, but you do want to sell all your extra stuff that you don't need in order to make some room for large resources. And we're actually going to need a lot of flash grenades here. A lot of flash grenades. So I hope you have enough large resources. If you don't, buy more from the merchant. Here I made some room in order to get my shotgun out of storage because we're going to be needing it. Welcome. And you can actually sell your combat knife if you want to because you get a new knife from Krauser. Oh, you just got a new knife from Krauser. So here we can go ahead and run right up behind these little sacks right here, these little box sacks, and hide from the grenade launcher and turret and let Mike do his thing. We want to make it up top as soon as possible because if you make it all the way up top before the cutscene occurs, you don't get stuck in the cutscene animation, which is nice. So shoot all the enemies coming down this corridor here. It's free. But don't spam it because you actually have a limited amount of ammunition. You only start with 200 rounds. So don't just spray and pray. Actually aim a little bit. And we're just going to wait up here for some of the enemies at the bottom to reach the top. Because once they reach... Up top, Mike can just spray them. He can just nuke them. I don't know exactly what triggers him to destroy the barricade, but... Killing enemies seems to make it faster, so I just kind of help him out and kill some of the enemies. So this next section here, you actually don't have to hang in before you uh, join in on the fun. You can just run straight through. There are two dynamite guys here that can ruin your day if you're not careful. Please don't grab me. So this is a pretty well-known skip coming up. You can destroy the anti-aircraft uh, the anti-aircraft gun with one heavy grenade and one regular grenade. You actually don't need two heavy grenades. So we're gonna run to the next section here. I aim down sights in order to clip myself into the wall so I don't get targeted by enemies. Here, I get a little bit stunlocked here, but I got lucky. I didn't get hit. So I use the M of uh, the Magnum here just to get this guy to stop shooting. Because I don't want him shooting at me while I'm running across to the lever. Now it's time to put the hand grenades, I'm sorry, the flash grenades to work. You can cancel out of the lever pulling animation by spamming space or ADS. Yeah, this is a gauntlet. This is a super gauntlet.
It's about running and gunning. So much luck. So many things can go wrong here. Use every single grenade or flash grenade you need to get people out of your way. Shit, my body armor. And I know that red rocket launcher laser sight is really scary, but I'm not gonna lie, sometimes he helps me out by killing the, the other enemies around me. But yeah, the upcoming sections, you don't need the resources, so don't be shy about those flashbangs, and don't be shy about those grenades and shotgun shells. Oh, Mike, oh no. Thanks. We get out of here. Drinks are on me. Watch out for the bugs. I'll make sure you're the next to go, Sadler. So, we're just going to look at the ground again so that the visa doors don't exist. Uh, of course, it's me. So, in this section with the regenerators and the body bags, there's actually a skip that you can employ with uh, the scope again because the doors here are actually so thin that you can just clip through them by walking back into them. But I have never seemed to get that glitch down correctly. So, I decided just to do this section the normal way. But there is definitely quite a bit of time save here, like a good 30 seconds if you know how to clip through the doors using the scope. So here, you want to save here. And this is going to be the last save that you will make during this run. And is the last save that you actually need. Be sure to repair your body armor here as well. You're going to need the uh, extra tankiness. The skip that we're going to be using here is going to save you a lot of time. So I kill that Navistador so he doesn't annoy me. And then I throw a flashbang here so the Navistador and the Archer here don't annoy me. Watch out for the bear traps here. I've run out. I've run into so many bear traps here. I use my Magnum to kill that rocket launcher guy. You can also use your sniper as well. Heal up. Make sure you have enough health for this skip. So what's going to happen is a Novistador is going to come from behind you and hit you. And it's going to hit you past the laser wall for the Woo! turret. Oh, and then great. the turret will actually target the Novistador instead. Shit, allowing you just to run by the laser turret without taking that much damage. I would say this strategy is about... 90% consistent. I have like a 90% success rate. Uh, I've had things go wrong where the turret did target me, but um, that's the reason we have a save back there. Actually. Yeah, you would expend a lot of resources to get to the turret normally, and you most likely spent all of your flash grenades and heavy grenades in the last section. So it is worth it to do the skip. Oh, and I hate this section, by the way. I absolutely hate it. That's why I'm fast forwarding through it because yep. it's just We're slow. It's just a walking a sequence that takes three minutes. It's really unfortunate. Yo, I like how this is three fucking minutes. But yeah, after this section, you are pretty much home free. There is very, very little stress involved during the last chapter. All right, so chapter 16, the final chapter, the showdown with Sadler. Yeah. I really like Sadler in this version of the game because he seems so much more creepy. They're more leaning towards the religious angle. I felt like he was more of a comical villain in the OG version. In this new one, he feels like those fanatical Netflix 
characters, those Netflix cult leaders that you see. <laughs> it's very, very accurate. That shit's scary. So they did a good job with Sadler this time around. So this next session is pretty breezy. Look at this place. Just jump down here. There's gonna be a Nevisador waiting for you down here. But he doesn't know what the right gun is yet, so you can introduce that to him. There's treasure back there, but you don't need the money. You don't need the extra money. And for here, I was getting really close to my um, three hour mark. And I, I was hauling ass. <laughs> Another Nevisador here. Just duck right under. Don't worry about the one behind you. He can't hit you if you're quick enough. There is a gold igot that's in the chest here. It's free money. I'm selling the uh, Magnum. I decided not to grab it. I've got something so basically, we're going to sell however much money or weapons we need to sell in order to get the rocket launcher. Because that's what we're going to use it. That's what we're going to use on Sadler. And it's going to turn the fight into an absolute joke. It ends it instantaneously. It's kind of like a meme from the previous game too. Just using the rocket launcher just to end the fight. I like how they worked so hard and spent so much money developing this fight. But there's no way in hell I'm doing it legitimately with the introduction of the Navisadors to the fight. Fuck you, Capcom. So here, he doesn't really start taking damage until his tentacles spawn, so you don't need to waste ammo. But basically, he does have a health bar, and the quicker you can pump damage into him, the quicker Ada will throw the rocket launcher to you. But yeah, it's an auto-scroller now. Like, you don't need to worry about anything. Like, it's very unlikely that you're gonna die here. Speedrunners use the Magnum in order to burst them down to save a lot of time, but you don't need to. Just shoot them with whatever you got. Here's the rocket launcher. And give Sadler his holy body. The holy body he has always wanted. Yeah, and that's pretty much the end of the game. This is basically a victory lap. All of the Resident Evil games have a victory lap at the end. But the game is pretty much over. Thanks. There's gonna be another guy that tries to get friendly with you, don't let him. So the jet ski section is pretty straightforward, but the only thing you do need to worry about is the debris that's laying around. So you can't be asleep, you know what I'm saying? Like don't sleep, but it's chill. Because the debris can send you flying into the wall and killing you instantly. And losing a run during the jet ski section is, I don't know man, there's something really demoralizing about that. That really makes you want to install the game. So just don't sleep is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you gotta do it. It's so good. This section gets the blood pumping so hard. The music. The dynamic camera angles, oh man, dude, Resident Evil 4. I can't wait to play this again. And again. Yeah, 
Yeah, sub. Sub. Sub three hours. Sub three hours. Easy. And that. That's it. A sub three hour Resident Evil 4 remake. 2003. Any percent S plus professional run. Even though world record right now is like faster by an entire hour. I like how I'm so proud of myself. To those that have made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, sorry for the video being so long, um, but I do believe that a step-by-step -step guide is the best way to learn this game because this game re uh, rewards a lot of forward knowledge. I could put in a word with my dad. Have you assigned to my I usually don't make videos like this, but I just had to. This game is so good. You proved you could and I still uh, hear about people having trouble on professional difficulty. So if you guys learn anything new, even if you are a veteran, you know, go ahead and drop a like for me. I appreciate it. But thank you so much for watching, guys. It's been a blast. Go out there, smash some ganados. So oh, nice, dude. So nice. Come in. Maybe the internet isn't such a bad place. Is this thing even on? And you bet your ass that in one month, on. you this game is going to get so much more optimized. This guide is going to get even better. So subscribe if you want to see that. <laughs> All right. Gloria, let's blog us. Peace out. You really are the best. Uh, I think that, like, um, right now, like, speedrunners aren't even going for S+. Plus. Like, they're going for just any percent professional. They don't even care about getting S+. Plus. I'm pretty sure X+, plus will be a category. But once people get really good at the game, like, everything is going to be S+. Plus because people aren't going to be saving, like, at all. Like, they're not going to just, they're just going to run through the entire game.